Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie and Marie Does Stuff here on FlossTube and I am coming to you on this Saturday, March the 30th, 2019 uh, with a video I wasn't really expecting on filming today. Um, so you're not going to see my face, face today. Uh, it's Saturday and I'm not putting makeup on. <laughs> um, but um, I have been asked the question several times uh, while I've been stitching Stargazer, what's the deal with all these threads down here? And most recently, um, Jennifer, Whistlestop sister, she asked me on Instagram today, and I thought, well, I'm getting really close to the bottom, like right here, this stitch right here is about 20 stitches from the very bottom of the whole design. Um, and I'm not doing this so much anymore with the with the threads parts here. So I thought that now's now's a good time. And then unexpectedly, Danny went to his brother's house to go play board games. So all of this is coming together very beautifully. So here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do this relatively quick like. Uh, this isn't gonna be a super long drawn out thing because this is really simple. These are parked threads. So when I have a color here, like this palest shade, um, right there, you see where my pin is poking at? That's the palest shade in, in these bustled up skirts here. Uh, that is used again in this stitch right here, so I have it parked here. Now you guys know, because I've, I've done it, I've talked about it several times, in full coverage demos, but my stitches go, I come up at bottom left and go down at top right, then I come up at bottom right and go down at top left. So these threads here are in the bottom left position so that when I pick up this thread and thread it, I can just make my first leg of my stitch and I'm off and running. Um, the reason that I do this is that I set goal lines. So I took my chart and made a working copy and then drew goal lines throughout the chart. So each month I have a, speci a specified chunk that I want to get done. And once I reach that line, sometimes I'll continue on. Um, you can see over here I've done a little bit of continuation. There's been a little bit here and there. But for the most part, like, I might as well just put the thread there and then I've already got it ready to go. So that when I get to this point, where I'm back over here on the left, working my way to the right, because that's just the way that I like to work. Um, especially with the way that this pattern is. Um, you can kind of see how the, the shades are alternating. Um, my threads are ready to go and I can just, I can just start stitching. So that's really... That's the whole premise of the whole thing. It's just parking. It's just with a different sort of application, I suppose. So I'm going to stitch a little bit um, so that you guys can see this in action. Um, I need to pick a color that needs to get parked somewhere. See, the trouble is, is that because I'm so far down the towards the bottom, I'm kind of just taking a color as far down as it goes. Um, and so... Like, this is done here. This over here is done. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm just going to show you. I guess I'll just show you how this works. So I'm going to push these off to the side. Do they get tangled? That's a question that I always get about parking. Do they get tangled? Sometimes, yeah. But I am constantly, like, pulling them up and running my fingers through them to prevent them from knotting up. Um, very rarely in the last few years have I had an issue where I had to actually cut a knot out. Uh, that rarely happens. Um, but it does, because that's the nature of thread, I suppose. So, I'm going to go ahead and thread this and stitch with it a little bit. See, just like that. Had it threaded and made the first leg of my first stitch.
So I need this thread for three more stitches. And I don't have exactly a whole lot left, so I can show you how I handle that when I'm, um, what I typically do anyway. Um, but let's say, for instance, just hypothetically speaking, this is my goal line right here. And so I'm going to park it in the next time that it occurs. So that stitch would be right here. I'm going to pull this thread up, and then I would unthread my needle, and then just leave it there. So it's ready to go the next time that I work on this section. But since I'm going to do these three stitches, I'm not going to unthread my needle. Uh, but let me do those three stitches here real quick. Now, typically when I'm trying to get a bunch of stitches done uh, relatively quickly, I don't weave in ends regularly. And I'll show you, I'll show you what I do. Okay, let me peek at my pattern here real quick and make sure that I don't need this color anymore in this area. Nope, I hate that stitch. I'm going to undo that. There we go. Okay, that's better. Um, nope, I don't need this color anywhere close to this. So, could I flip to the back and weave this under, clip it, and then toss the ort in my ort jar? Yep, I sure could. Or, I could, and this is what I, this is what I do oftentimes. Uh, you can't see that, so let me bring it somewhere closer. So this here is a whole, yeah, you can, you can see that in the top of the screen. This here is a hole where a bead is gonna go. Um, and so I'm just going to thread, pull that thread up there. It's out of my way. It's not going to be interrupted or in like the rest of my stitching for this session, however long it is, won't be impacted. And then later on down the line, when I'm doing sort of a mass cleanup, I'll flip to the back and thread these tails under, uh, just as, just as you would normally, um, but this is sort of, it just kind of speeds up the process. I don't have to flip to the back. Um, I just sort of do everything in mass. So then I would come over here. And so I've got my next, my next thread in line. I'm going to thread that. And I'm ready to go.
Okay, so I'm gonna flip to the back and show you guys how I how I do the weaving in ends bit. So let me do that. Okay, so you can see the back of my work, and I'm not too embarrassed by it. Um, I'm not usually embarrassed by my backs, um, but this one looks really nice because the colors all just kind of flow pretty easily. So I'm gonna first weave this one in. And I'm gonna leave that there. And then I'm going to pull this one out, thread my needle, and weave it under. Okay, then I'm gonna, I don't normally do that, but I'll put it on the needle miner. Um, so then you see I have both of these two tails hanging. So clip, clip, put them in the art jar. Ta-da! And so that's how I do that. Now, I will tell you guys that there are some threads that need to go in here and in here. And normally, when I'm working left to right like I am right now, I will fill those in as I get to them. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I just wanted to show you guys um, how I deal with the with the parked ones. Uh, some people are um, hesitant about trying parking. Um, I know it can be a little scary. You you're like, oh gosh, what if I park the wrong color in the spot? Um, and you know when I'm dealing with three or four shades that, I mean, they're all basically in the same family, uh, it could get confusing. And some of these are pretty close together. Um, these two light shades right here are pretty close together. Uh, these two, in some cases, I get confused. Uh, I have both 844 and 3799, and they're both just dark gray. So I can get them confused. One piece of advice that I have for people who are interested in trying parking uh, but have never done it before is to park your thread and highlight the stitch in a different color than you would normally. So on your pattern, use like a neon yellow or something. Highlight that stitch so you know you have an indication to yourself that it's parked there. And then highlight over with a different color when you're highlighting your completed stitches. Um, to show that that's complete. Um, that is something that I was doing when I first started out parking. I was, I had highlighters coming out of my ears basically because I would use yellow to highlight the parked threads and then I would use green to highlight the beads and then I would use pink over the yellow stitches as well as my completed stitches to show what was done. I don't highlight so much anymore uh, because I've gotten pretty confident with, with parking. Uh, but that's me. And, you know, I've been doing this a while. So, there is that. I think that that is everything for this video. I hope that you guys find it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, um, either in the comment section below, or private message me, or Instagram, whatnot. Um, I'll be happy to, to uh, try to answer <laughs> your questions. Um, and, like I said, I hope that this is helpful. Uh, this is just another way of doing it. It's not the end-all be-all. It's just it's just how I do things. So Happy stitching everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video Which is probably going to be on Monday with um, some spreadsheet walkthroughs like I talked about this past week um, And until then happy stitching y'all be kind. See you next time